Talk Stroke. I am your host, Jerry Wald, and also, also Stroke Survivor. And I started, if you don't know and haven't followed us, I started doing this show to bring awareness to stroke, TBI, aphasia, really brain injury. Um, and I also want to provide a platform for all survivors to share their journeys, what they're going through. And it's from all across the world. Um, and also bring on, on experts in brain health so they can share their knowledge with us. So anyway, let's all please um, welcome my next guest is uh, Juan Torres. And I want, he recently had a stroke. So um, ask questions, uh, make comments, and, uh, and um, please subscribe to uh, my YouTube channel, Let's Talk Stroke. So let's go ahead and get started. All righty, good morning. Good morning, you guys here. And uh, again, uh, make comments, ask questions, and uh, nice to see you guys. Bo from Norway, glad to see you here. So uh, let's bring on Juan and please welcome him. Make him feel like um, he's awesome, like we say that to everybody else. So, okay. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks yeah. for having. Thanks for having me on your show. Oh man, I'm so happy that you you agreed to do this because uh, you've got an amazing story and uh, and you recently had your stroke. Your um, and I don't. Can you see the comments? Yeah, I can see them. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Nice to see you guys here. Um, I, I see if you know any of these people. Do you know April? Um, I know a couple of people. Yeah. I know yeah, about nice. two, two or three people, you know. Good. Good to see you guys. Jenny DeSoto, thank you for saying hello to Juan there. I appreciate it. And hi, hi, everybody. Hi. Yeah, these are great people. Good morning, you guys. And you'll see the comments. And Mike Peters, he's from South Wales, United Kingdom. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, nice. Yeah, and it's great. This is a great platform to have people share their stories. Um, it's just awesome. And so let's just rewind the clock here. Um, who was before your stroke, and you just had your stroke, and this is yeah, yeah. I had it like I think what three, three months and like two weeks, or three months and one week. November tenth wow. was the day. Wow! And yeah. what did you do before that? Before that, I was just living my life, minding my own business. I was a truck driver. I was working anywhere from twelve to nineteen hours, and I'm not exaggerating. I was literally working those hours, and and uh, and that's what I was doing. Then. That's illegal, by the way. You're only technically allowed to 14-hour days as a truck driver. And out of those 14, you drive 11. Wow. So that was totally illegal. But I was doing it. I was making good money. And uh, so I was a truck driver. And I was a father. Yeah. I, I, I love. That's what I dedicated. I, I, I lived a bearing life. I was driving, working, come home. See my son, and then I would play video games. That's all I did, <laughs> you know. So wow. I was minding my own business, and just one morning, you know, I woke up to go to work like any other day, like around two o'clock in the morning. Right. And I went, and I'm from Pennsylvania, Allentown, Pennsylvania. Yeah. Right yeah. now I'm in I'm in Florida, which I'll get to later. But right. I was, you know, I live I live in in Pennsylvania. I got up two o'clock in the morning to go to work, right? And I had a delivery with two stops that day. I was I was supposed to deliver it to New York, to Manhattan. I'm sure a lot of you guys know Manhattan. So I went to Manhattan, delivered my first load. Right. Uh, a couple of days before that, I was having an argument with my son because he was going to take a trip to Hawaii to go see his girlfriend. Right. And you know, as a parent. You don't want your 18-year-old son going all the way to Hawaii by himself. So, you know, I gave him a, hot, a hard time about him, you know. But it was yeah. one of the times where I told him, you know, if you want to go, you can go. But I don't think you should go, you know, because that's far and dangerous. So I was nervous. I was nervous out of my mind, you know. Sure. But anyways, so I went to my first stop. 
delivered it, and right when I was getting unloaded, I was delivering to Costco. I'm right. sure some of you guys are familiar with Costco. My first stop I was delivering, so I went to Dunkin' Donuts to get me a cup of coffee, and then I recorded my last video as a normal human being. I mean, I'm not saying we're not normal, but you're saying, like, I mean, I don't know what's the best way to describe it. You know, since we have this, it changes us, you know? Right. So before my stroke, the last video I ever did was to my son. And I was just recording because I felt bad that I had an argument with him. So in the video, I recorded, I, I was telling him, I'm sorry that we got into an argument, that I want him to know that I love him and that I believe in him and everything. Great. So anyway, yeah, yeah. So I, you know, I made that video. I didn't think nothing of it. I was just making a video. You know what? To be honest with you, I probably was never going to give him the video because I just felt so bad. So I did my first delivery. Then when I got to my second stop, which was half an hour away in this place called Regal Park in York, I went to there. And as soon as I got there, I went inside, told them I'm here. They, st they were going to start unloading me. So then when I came back outside to get in my truck, like I started feeling weird, like something was wrong. Yeah. So I thought to myself, I think I need something to eat, you know? So right. what do I do? I obviously leave my truck there. I go around the corner to Chipotle. Yeah. This is, <laughs> I, 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 we, we talked about this, and you guys um, watching, listen to this story right now, because this is pretty amazing how... I, I call it... I call it my last supper, but I never had it because I didn't get to eat it. So I went around the corner. I went around the corner, went into the Chipotle just because I felt weird, like yeah. felt weird, just tired, drained or whatever. And next thing you know, I ordered, I ordered a bowl. And as soon as I started ordering the stuff to put on it, I dropped my phone to the ground. Now, anybody that knows me good knows I don't like to drop my phone because I love phones. Right. I dropped my phone to the ground, but I picked it up. I looked at it. It was fine. I didn't think nothing of it. All of a sudden, I keep ordering. I dropped it again, and I'm like, what the heck's going on here? By that time, it was strange. But then I dropped it again a third time, then a fourth time, right? In, and I'm like, something's wrong with me. I keep dropping my phone. And then next thing you know, I dropped it again. I, I paid for my food real quick. And I got scared, so I kind of like hurried up towards the front, which the front is really the is the is the exit to get out. Right. When I got to the front, I started feeling real messed up. I dropped my phone again, so I called my son, and he was on his way to Hawaii, so he couldn't answer because he was on the, on the on the airport or whatever. So then I called my best friend. He didn't answer either. Then I called my roommate. Finally, when I called my roommate, she picked up. And I said, listen, oh, by the way, I called her because nobody in, in the Chipotle would help me. This yeah, is New York cool. for you. This yeah, is New York. Cool. Nobody wanted to help me. Everybody just stood back. They thought I was on drugs. They thought I was a drug addict because right. of the way I was acting. Because my body started acting weird, you know? So next thing you know, I called my roommate. My roommate picks up. I said, listen, could you tell these people that something's wrong with me and I need them to call the ambulance? So next thing you know, I gave the phone to one of them. She told him he's a truck driver. Please help him. Something's wrong with him. He's not a drug addict. So they went, I guess they called the ambulance. I got the phone back. I don't know what I said. The only thing I remember saying to her, one of the last things, I was like, tell my son I love him. Tell my son I love him. I, yo, I, as I'm sitting here today, God knows, I thought I was dead. I yeah. thought I was dead. Okay? Yeah. I thought that was my last time saying goodbye to my son, and it was going to be a message to him. Right. So right. then I dropped to the ground. The last, next, next thing I remember is I remember one of the guys from the ambulance coming and that's all I remember. I don't remember nothing else. The like, next thing I remember, I think, I don't remember if it was the next day or the day after, where one of my friends was standing there trying to give me ice because they wouldn't let me have water. Right. 
because they didn't know if I could swallow or not. Right. So I'm not sure what day that was. And then after that, I don't remember nothing else until later on again. Right. Yeah, okay. Quite, quite the journey. I mean, people in, I know, because we talked extensively the uh, last week, and it's, it's amazing that uh, Chipotle, all the, you know, they, they were saying something to you. They were saying, oh, uh, or something like you were, you're drunk or you're on drugs or. Yeah. Uh, you know, yeah, they thought I was on drugs or something. Yeah, yeah. Crazy. But you know what? That's how New York are. New York is like that. A lot of people don't help. Everybody just minds their business, you know? Yeah. Well, only for this kind of thing, they mind their business. But next thing you know, I had to, end up, I have to, I have to call somebody so they can tell them that I'm not a drug addict to help me. Right. So they finally helped me. Next thing you know, I was in the hospital. I don't know how long I was in there for. I was in there for a total of one month in the hospital in New York, away right. from home. Okay. Now, one of the craziest things that happened, well, it was bad in the hospital. They took, you know, those pants they put under yeah. your butt so you can yeah. take a, a, they put one under there and they left it there for hours for in case I had to take a dump. Mm -hmm. And then I would have to sit in my own filth. Because they were, I think it's because they were so busy with other patients and they were so bad at their job that they would leave me there. Right. And I was scared. I didn't know what was going on. And all I knew is that when I woke up, half my body was paralyzed. Yeah. My whole right side was paralyzed. And I didn't know what was going on. And I was, I, I mean, just so you, you remember that feeling of oh, like, yeah. you know, desperation and stuff. Yeah. You know, but honestly, I honestly didn't think, I didn't know much about it, so I thought I'd be back at work in a couple of weeks, you know? Yeah. But it didn't work out like that. I spent a month in there, and then after that, they sent me to um, a place in Pennsylvania. The The ambulance ride from New York to Pennsylvania was $1,600. By the way, my son raised $8,000 for me. I saw that. I saw that on your... And you're my son. I love my son. I yeah. love him. He's my heart, man. I love him so much. He raised a thousand dollars. So he paid out of that money. He used that, a little bit of that money to get me to Pennsylvania. Once I got to Pennsylvania, I was there in, in a place getting therapy for a month. Now, this is the funny part. I'm in, in therapy and uh, like I told you before, I'm not making fun of anybody, so please don't take it that way. But everybody that was there, like they had strokes and they had other brain problems. Sure. But they were not coherent. They couldn't understand. You know, they were like messed up. So I was there and I felt like these people were lying to me while I was there. I thought I was in a place. I was in a, in a, Place because they thought I was crazy. Yeah, a mental so for place. the first two first two weeks that I was there, I thought my son was lying to me about why I was there. I thought I was there because I was. They thought I was crazy, right. and that I was gonna be there for the rest of my life. And that yeah. was scary. Yeah. I, At I the time, it was scary. I sure. mean, now now it's funny to me because I'm like, damn, I thought I was, in the, you know. So they thought I was crazy. So, but at the time I, I was scared, and I told my called my called my son. I said, "Junior, tell me the truth. Am I here because you think I'm crazy? Because I'm not crazy, Junior. I just had an accident, but I'm not crazy. Right? Tell right. me you didn't put me in here because you think I'm crazy." And he probably said, "No, I didn't put you in there." I'm like, "Once you get better, you're gonna get out." I'm like, "I think you're lying to me. Tell me the truth." And you don't and then, know. Yes, even the people that work there, they let me go outside where normally they don't allow people, like to another hallway, just right. to prove to me that they that I'm not there because they holding me against my will because right. I thought they were. Sure. And then finally, after two weeks of being there, finally some people that were with they had their mind fine, they they started to come in. So I met a couple of people. One lady had a. Uh, an operation on her, I mean, uh, operation on her brain yeah. because she had um, uh, like like a ball or something like a, a I forgot what they call it, a, 
they they call it. I forgot what they call it. I'm having one of those moments, like a tumor, a tumor. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah. We all. Have you know those moments, right? right? Yeah. So she had a tumor, so they operated, and she was good. So I met her. She was good. She was good. And then I met another woman that was good, and then I met another guy. So there was like about four of us that would always talk, nice. and we could have normal conversations. So then I started to relax and know that I wasn't there because they thought I was crazy, you know? Right, right. That made you feel so, a lot better. But it was still tough because I couldn't find anybody to take care of me. Right. I, I have a, an apartment. I had an apartment, but my apartment was my apartment was no longer mine. It was taken from me. Okay, and um, so next, which that was tough for me because I love my place and I wanted to go back there. But you didn't know but about. Yeah, you didn't know, tell that story about that. That's, everybody needs to hear. This is okay. reality. I, I, I'm gonna tell the story, but I know that person is gonna hear it. But it's good because maybe they understand how much that hurt me. Yeah, but my place. My roommate, which I, I love very much, and she loved me too, I know. Sure. She moved her boyfriend into my place, and she just assumed that that was okay. So now I didn't have my place anymore. And since I didn't have, uh, what do you call that? Um, um, you know, when you sign a lease, yeah, a lease. Yeah. I didn't yeah. have a lease. It was just month to month. Right. You know, they basically. She took my place. You know, she thought she didn't see nothing wrong with it. Probably to this day, she doesn't think she did anything wrong to me. But that's okay, whatever. Right. Anyways, so I lost my, I didn't have my place. Um, None of my friends helped me. No one, no one wanted to take me in. You know, one person said they would take me in, and two days later, they changed their mind. Okay. Then right. I called the pastor, and then. The pastor told me that he was going to find me a place to go to, to get help. Two days later, he, he he said, first, he didn't call me for a while. And I was like, what happened? Finally, he said he couldn't help me. He couldn't do nothing. He couldn't find a place. So everywhere I look, all, all the help that I thought I was going to get, get didn't come through. So what they were going to do is they were going to put me in a a home, like, you know, like a home until sure. I get better. But right. I still didn't trust. I thought I was going to be there for the rest of my life. Right. Like, the only thing I thought is, like, oh, I'm too old. You know, they're going to, my son's going to put me in one of those places and I'm going to be there forever. You know right. how we're afraid and we're not thinking straight. Uh, that's how absolutely. it felt. You know, that's how I felt. So, anyways, this girl finally, this girl finally said she would help me. Okay. I was going to pay her $5 a month. So she was going to help me. Right. Next, you know, she came in to get trained of how to take care of me. Okay. Yeah. And then next, you know, I said, "You sure you want to do this? Because this is not gonna be easy." She said, "Oh no, it's good." For I, I only lasted a week at her house. Okay. Right. She, she would get mad at me because she called me like I'm a punk. Like, like this is such an easy. Like, why am I complaining so much? That. You know, basically that I'm not being a man and I'm not taking this. Like, this should be easy for me to, that why am I complaining so bad? Like, she doesn't understand yeah. what it is to be paralyzed in half your body because right. of a stroke. You know what I'm saying? So after yeah. a week, she kicked me out. But go ahead, what were you going to say? No, no, no. I, I totally understand. You know, uh, stroke, like I said, we said stroke is not yeah. for the week. Exactly. So... She she was um she kicked me out after we she dropped me she dropped me three times in the in her house right while I was there that week she dropped me three times one of them was in the in the bathroom when I was gonna get in the shower right. another time was I I fell off the bed because she had me on an air mattress and right. if any of you guys know an air mattress that deflates is a no no for people that are paralyzed. You guys wow. know it, okay? You know, the last time she dropped me, I was going to therapy. So she was carrying me down the, she was carrying me down the stairs um, with my wheelchair and she dropped me on the, off my wheelchair, okay? Right. And after she walked me off the wheelchair, two, she dropped me. Two people that were driving by saw it. 
and they stopped. Wow. Two people saw it as she as they're driving by. They stopped to help me get up because I was in so much pain. Because everybody know when you your your parallel side is in pain. Yeah. All the time your shoulder, my shoulder was in pain. You you guys know, I'm sure. Yeah. So I was in so much pain. So they finally helped me up. You know, this girl did not have any handicap entrances for this place. The back and the front, there was a lot of steps to go up. She lied. Wow. She lied. At the end of the day, all she wanted was the five hundred dollars for weed. For weed, not to help her friend, but to weed. I lasted a week. She kicked me out, and not only did she kick me out, but not only did she kick me out, but she kept my five hundred dollars. That's a look at that human being for you. That's wow. the type of human beings that I've been dealing with. Okay, but yeah, yet somehow it's my fault. Right. You know, she got the nerve to say, "She, I'm in a wheelchair." She got the nerve to tell me that I'm being lazy. How the hell am I being lazy? I'm sorry, but how am I being lazy? What am I supposed to do? Like get up by the miracle of God and just walk around and start helping you clean the house? Right, exactly. So anyways, she kicked me out of there. My son put me in a place for a week because right. now I, I didn't have no place to go. My son couldn't put me to live with him because, you know, he lives with his mother. So he put me in the hospital in a, in, for a week. And I don't mean to be, you know, talking too much. No, but this is perfect. I went, to the, I went to the hospital, right, in the right. emergency. I was in an emergency for a total of over a week, okay? Right. And the first week I was there was such a nightmare because they didn't have room in the hospital. So they... I, at first, I was in the emergency bed, and then the, I was telling the lady that I felt claustrophobic. I felt claustrophobic. I didn't tell you this last time. I felt claustrophobic. So I asked her, could she let me onto the hallway for a little bit? Because I felt claustrophobic. And sure. she said no. And then, I, and then I asked again a little bit later. And then she got mad at me. She said, you want to go outside? I'm like, yeah, for a little bit. She put me outside in the hallway. But you know what she did? She gave my bed to somebody else and kept me outside because of that. So I was outside for two, two, three nights before they put me in a, in a bed upstairs. But while I was out there, they put me in front of this room where this lady was at, okay? Right? And yeah. she was fine. She, was, she got out to use the bathroom and everything. But they put me right in front of the door, which I found kind of odd because I was pretty much invading her, her privacy, right? Right. But yo, that night, that night, she she got the there was like ten doctors came in and rushed into her room because she was dying. Something happened to her. Right. And she was dying. And I don't know what happened to her, but something was wrong with her. And all these doctors were coming in, they were all panicking. And I'm like, what the heck? And I was like, could you guys move me away from here? I don't want to see this. They didn't move me, they wouldn't listen to me. They said, wow. just stay still. And then I waited a while, and then I couldn't take them. I was like, and then I screamed. I said, can you please move me out of here? And then right. finally they moved me to another part of the hallway. Like, who the hell wants to see somebody dying? I know, right? not at all. Exactly. No. I mean, it's, it's heartbreaking what you have, you have to go through. People just don't understand that have not gone through what we've gone through. They just yeah. don't understand. What caused um, – Marine is here. You can see the com – did you ever find out what caused your stroke? Well, I have the – I always don't know how to pronounce it, but the hemor – hemor – frowning, whatever. Hemorrhagic. Some people are laughing, but I had that stroke. I had high blood pressure. I had yeah. high blood pressure. My job, I was always having – um, what do they call that? Like road rage? Not, oh. not bad. Oh. Like It wasn't like I would fight with people, but I would always be – like you know, like pissed off because New York, man. Yeah, I know. New York is, I was in New York almost every day, so that and I was. I, I'm a truck driver, so I wouldn't eat good. I wouldn't have a good healthy, you know. And yeah. I should have checked my blood pressure, but I never knew. I knew nothing about strokes or nothing, yeah. you know. Yeah, absolutely. I knew nothing about it. So basically, 
when I learned about stroke, it was already too late. You know, I was already in the midst of having one. You know, I already that's had. Yeah, a lot of us. Same exactly. Thing. Yeah. So, so that's what happened, and and um. So where was I? So I, I Stop forgot laughing. where I was. <laughs> you know, I, not laughing, but I understand. I think a lot of us understand that we forget when we start talking. You know, but it was you were at the hospital and the lady was dying. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was in the hospital, okay, and they were trying to find me a place to put me in, like one of those home places, because at this point, I'm like, I have no choice, but I got to go to one of these homes. Right. I waited a week. They still couldn't find me one. They said, if we find you one, it's going to be far away from home, because we've looked everywhere close, and we can't find one. So I talked to my son. I talked to my son. I said, I can't take this no more. It's just nightmare after nightmare after nightmare, you know? Right. And then I said, I think I want to go with my sister in Pennsylvania, in Florida, because she's right. been telling me to go live with her and that she would help me. But I didn't want to because I wanted to be close to my son. I love my son. I did not want to go because you want to know the truth. I honestly, this is everybody out there. This is the honest truth. I honestly didn't think I had long to live. Everybody, no one understands that. The only reason I wanted to stay home is because I, I thought I only had either a few days or a few months and I was going to die because the hospital made you feel that way. Yeah. The hospital and then the people, when I was in therapy, they make you feel like there's no hope for you. Yeah. Okay? I so I thought I was going to die. So I didn't think I had much time left and I wanted to spend it with my son. So you know yeah. what it was? Heartbreaking to have yeah. to leave my son. I, it was I, the most heartbreaking thing I had to do, the hardest thing. And I've been through a lot. Yeah. You know, I've been through a lot, but this was the hardest thing I had to let go. Say goodbye to my son. My sister drove from 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 Florida. Her and her husband, they drove up to Pennsylvania to pick me up. Yeah. And saying goodbye to my son was the most heartbreaking thing I had to do because I've been there for him since day one. I cut his umbilical cord. I paid him to go to college, I mean, to to um, school, you know, middle school and, and high school, private schools. Yeah. I was there for him. I always took care of my son, okay? I was supposed to, to, he was supposed to go to college, and he was in the National Guard. So I put, I helped my son get to the National Guard, and now he was going to go to college. And a few weeks before he was to go to college, and I was supposed to pay for it, this happened to me. Now my son couldn't go to school. The army pays for part of it, but not the sure. whole thing. Right. Although now we found out that they do pay for the whole thing if he goes to a public college or something like that. Sure. So he might go, but now he's working. Anyway, so, so I went to Florida. And then I've been in Florida for what? Like I think like three weeks. I've been here. And wow. since I've been here is where I found groups of people that have strokes. Right. Okay? Incredible. And yeah, and most people are incredible and great people. Occasionally you have people that have had strokes, but they're total jerks and it makes you mad. Did you learn anything? Right. But most people are good people. And one thing I learned from these groups is that there's people living with this stuff. Right. They're living with this thing. So now I have hope to live with this, you know? I Absolutely. mean, don't get me wrong. I'm still dealing with it. I'm still, like, having my moments where I'm, like, you know, struggling and, and don't feel like there's no hope. And right. so I made some friends on these groups, and I made some trucker friends recently. And then I met this friend of mine from, man, she's from, um, I forget the name of the country. Oh, man. If she's okay. dead, she probably could write it down, but... Yeah, I met this great girl from from this country, and she's been very helpful to me too. Nice, and you know, good friends and everything, you know, and and it's good. I, I feel happy. I feel like I have a future, you know. Yeah, you, I just gotta do. take care of myself. Yeah, and you, I mean, three months. How you have come a long way in in three months. I know. I'm look. I look some of the comments here, and you're 46. Yeah, 46. Yeah, that there you. There, uh, someone was yeah, asking. I'm 46 going on, on 20. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly it. And, and you, uh, Lynette, 
she's asking how long ago. It was actually about three months three ago. Three and a half right? months, three and a half months ago. Sorry, it's kind of hard for me to read. I never, I'm not used to this YouTube thing, so it's hard for me to go back and forth. Yeah. But yeah, it's about three, I think like November 10th, so about three and a half months. I might make it, take a make a, a few days or something, you know? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I know. I'm bringing some of the comments up, but they're still a little smaller, probably three to see on the screen. Thanks a lot, awesome. But, uh, and I, you guys, I appreciate you really being here. Uh, yeah, I mean, some of them. Yeah, it's, it's great. And, uh, um, yeah, Deborah here, what she want to bring us to it. He will bring us through it. Um, yeah. That's so funny. One, uh, one, lady, one person, one lady says, I joke, she's 49 and she feels like she's, her, her brain reminds her that she's in her 40s. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Exactly. This is a, yeah, this is, a, you're right, uh, T. Connection. I'm, I'm definitely going to read all the comments afterwards. So I'm sorry. It's just one of the yeah. things that happened to me with this stroke is it's hard for me to, like, you know, like be fast at everything, you know? Yeah, I totally understand. Um, yeah, Lynette Price, yeah, I see, yeah. She has She's 45, Lin Lynette is 45. Um, Bo News, good luck to you, sir, in the future. Yeah, yeah man, thank, thank you guys, you know? Yeah, I'm trying, support. you know, I'm trying to, and I'm just trying to, like a lot of people, one of the things I hear a lot of people say is, Learn how I forgot how they say, it, but learn to live with your new, your new future, or whatever you know. You, you, your new the you. new you, the new you, yeah. yeah. And yeah. I never understood what they meant by that, you know. Yeah. And I'll be honest, you, I want my old me back, but I know that I gotta get, I gotta, I do have to get used to with this new me, you know. What I'm saying? Yeah. Just, yeah. Hey, I hate to make it light, but three months and. I, if anybody's been on um, Juan's page, <laughs> you look at how far he's come walking. I mean, three months and he's walking with a cane. I mean, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, I want to go back to driving either driving trucks right. or, or driving a yard jockey truck. I don't know if you guys know what a yard jockey truck is, but basically it's a truck that you drive inside of a parking lot that has a lot of trailers and you could put them into the where they load them you can put them yeah. into the dock that load them and then take right. them out so i i want to go back to work um right now i'm not walking fully i can walk a little bit right. but definitely definitely still need a little bit of the wheelchair when i go places but i'm walking a little bit and then i'm walking with a cane too yeah and it's three and a half months so i'm hope so there's a there's hope and a chance for me to go to work again because I still got my license. Yeah, there you go. You got the license. That's not been taken away. Um, yeah, and certainly Ray, as you see, Ray just said, uh, so happy that you told told your story. Thank you. Thank you, Ray. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, there's so yeah. many. I know you'll probably go through them later, but there. Yeah, I'm going to go through them <laughs> later. I'm reading a couple right now, but yeah. Yeah, please do. There, And uh, I could see if... Uh, some of you can probably say where you're from as well, because I know I saw um, I, I saw Ivan. Well, Mo yeah. there, he's from Norway, and Ivan yeah. was from Athens, Greece. Yeah, Gail says calm minds prevail. Teresa says replying to Marina Ramos, this breath, breathe, oh breathe, breathe, breathe. Oh, you know what's one of the things I couldn't remember my ABCDs, yo. I couldn't remember at first, but now, now, now I can. So I'm sitting here saying, "Yeah, I can remember my ABCDs now." <laughs> I'm bragging I, about that. <laughs> I know. You see, I mean, look how far you've come through. My, I, I remember those trying to count. You know, one to ten. I mean, I think everybody is probably saying the same thing. They understand that, you know. Jenny, I'm in the same boat. Can walk small distance, but need a oh, okay, I'm gonna. I know that need a wheelchair for distance. It sucks, but it is what it is. We got to keep the positive mental attitude mm -hmm. and the 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 get stronger. Thank you, Jenny. Thank you. Um, yeah. Tanya, Tanya says, Chicago checking in. Good morning, everybody. Good yeah. morning, Tanya. 
And um, um, Ray is in Chicago. Oh, yeah, this is great. Thank you guys for just sharing your your story. Yeah, and there's Michelle. Advocate for yourself during communication. Um, and you've come so far. Yeah, you will get a lot better. That's right, Lynette. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, and you will. I mean, you. It's just amazing that you're you're sharing your story and yeah. Man, it, it, I'm trying to get better. This is I'm oh. kind of I'm smiling here right now, but. I, I still cry most days. Just remember when I when you first asked me to do an interview, what was the first thing I said? I said, listen, I don't really have a complete happy story yet because this is new to me, and I'm still trying to make sense of all this. Right. But, you know, I'm getting there, you know. I'm getting there, you know. Yeah. Uh, oh, look, someone here says, I'm in Jersey, Juan. I used to go out to um Allentown for shows. Yeah, Allentown is where I pretty much – I lived in Allentown for the last 15 years, but then the last two years I lived in um in um Karasaka, which is next to Allentown. Yeah, so yes, no. you know where I lived, yeah. Yeah, I do what too. I you know I, I lived in uh in uh oh, I had it. This is how bad I only, it, right next to Allentown, Altoona. Well, Altoona? Yeah. Oh, I know Altoona. Yeah. I know Altoona. Yeah. Okay, that's cool, man. I didn't yeah. know that. Yeah, it's funny. Yeah, my parents were born in uh, Scranton. Yeah, one lady says here she lives in Florida. Hey, that's where I live now. I live in um, where the heck I live? I oh, Lehigh, Lehigh Acres, Lehigh Acres, Florida is where I'm staying right now. Yeah, yeah, I know, Lynette. Yeah, yes, we get it. We know what it is like. So yeah, and the you know, are, that's the, that's you know the what's crazy? Part. You know what's crazy? I had friends get mad at me because I forget their name. But these are friends I hadn't seen like in a year. Of right. course, I just have a stroke. Yeah. Why the heck are you getting mad at me because I lost Because I we can't remember it. your name. It's yeah. crazy. I, I know. I know. I did, you... though. That's embarrassing. Like, how do you tell somebody you don't remember their name? You know? Yeah, I know exactly. I mean, I 100% know. I mean, I know all you guys out here, I know. But, um, this is great. Yeah, my brother is a soul survivor. But well, that's my Anna. sister. Yeah, that's, that's oh. Okay, yeah. Nice, I, yeah. Anna, nice to see you. See you. Yeah. Thank you. That's my sister. Go but on. she told me, says, I like him. I love his spirit. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. Uh, but thank you. Yo, let me tell you something, guys. I don't mean to interrupt. This guy right here has been a blessing. He's he's a good man. He had a stroke, and he's he's interviewing people now. For this, so I, I want to thank you, man. You're a good man. Oh, don't thank thank you. I appreciate you being on. I I, I appreciate your kind words. And appreciate everybody su subscribe to him. He's a good man and inspirational. Love you, Juan. Good. I appreciate you, man. This is great. Um, like, okay. Oh, Marina, you're good. Such a happy person. Yeah, but I know that yeah. I know exactly. I have eleven years out. I still have those. You know, I kind of hide it. Those emotional days. I mean, yeah. you know, they're, they're tough days to go through. But I'll be honest. I'll be honest, though. I love those um, groups that that we're in. Yeah. But the only part when I see somebody like two years or three or five years and they still can't walk and stuff, that breaks my heart because I know that's got to be tough. So my heart goes to you guys, man, because I know you know you guys have been fighting this fight for so long and only people that are fighting this fight know what it's like. Absolutely. So you know 100% true. Exactly. Like people, if you've never been to it, it's hard to understand. Like I could have never understood this before I went through it, you know? Uh, exactly. It, 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 it's just crazy. Um, Jenny, has, she had it seven years. Seven yeah. years post. Yeah, she just said too, your story, Juan, is a tough one, but you're, you've got the fight in you. You will get through this. Yeah. yeah, I'm trying, people. I swear I'm trying because I want to get back to work. But most of all, I want to get back to my son. I feel like, you know, I was I would always take care of my son. Always. I took care of my son the day this happened. I went from making seventy to a hundred thousand a year to zero dollars, man. And that kills me. Not I because I was bragging, but because of my son. I wanted to take care of him until he finished college. And yeah. now I can't. You know how hard that is? Yeah. Not, to tell your son, 
I'm sorry, I know I bought you a car, but I can't pay for it no more. Right. You have to return it. I'm sorry. I can't pay for your college. I'm sorry. Right. But you raised an amazing son. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, you're a great dad, like Marina said. Um, wow. Well, but yeah, you are alive, Juan. That's what Robin saying. Yes, I am alive, and I'm I'm learning to don't I'm uh, don't worry. I'm learning how to be thankful for those things, and I'm not being ungrateful. I promise. It's just I still have a lot of guilt, and sure. mainly for my son. I feel I feel like I failed my son. My son, I love him, and now it feels like our relationship has changed a little bit because I don't hear from him as much as I want to, you know? Right. And I know this ain't easy. This ain't easy for my son. I could care less about everybody else that stopped talking to me and other people that that turned their backs on me because it's, I don't care right. for my son. I just want to continue being his hero. Right. <laughs> I love him. Yeah. Sounds like he's such a good, a good son and he, you know, He's the, he's there for you. He's there. I mean, he's. I can see that. You know, deep down, he he cares. I mean, you're everything to him. I mean, what you've done for his whole life. He, he doesn't forget that. And you, this is just a little bump in the road, Juan. You know, I, yeah. hate that. I know. Trust me, I know the bump in the roads, and I know. Yeah, Tanya, your son will understand. Your son will see you as a fighter, kicking his stroke stroke in the butt. Listen, before. Before I used to, I wasn't a perfect man, you know. I got divorced 17 years ago, and you know, to my to my son's mother, right. she's reminded, but she'll tell you. I've always been a good father. She'll tell sure. you. We to this day we don't even really like each other, but we're cordial, you know. Sure. Um, right. And she knows that I'm there for my son. She at least gives me that respect that I love my son, Absolutely. and I've always taken care of him. My son told me. The other, like, okay, I don't even know when he told me, but he told me that I got to start doing for myself now, not for him, because he's going to be okay, you know? Yeah. So, you know, I, I mean, don't get me, we all kind of want to have that special someone, right? Of course, right. right? Sure. But, like me, I've always been about my son first, okay? Right. And my job, and... And I've always wanted to, uh, to get a relationship, but I would never trust women because I had so many bad experiences, you know? Right. But ever since this happened to me, like, that's like my dream, to get married, sure. you know, to meet a good person, you know, and just get married and just be a good person because I could have been a better person in life, you know? Yeah, and I feel like I could even as a father, I feel like I could have been a better father, and then I feel like I I feel guilty. Yeah, I've always, I don't know if there's parents out there that always felt guilty guilty that you haven't done enough to enough for your kid, you know? Right, right. Yeah, uh, he's eighteen, so yeah, that's true, Jenny. Exactly. Never give up, Juan. He's right. Your son. He's 18, so you need to really concentrate on your recovery now. Yeah. You know, yeah. then you get, get that recovery out of the way. Because, I mean, three months, you're speaking great. I mean, all the things that uh, that happen when you have a stroke, but you're you're overcome the the speaking. You can talk. You can uh, you can talk. Amazing. Look, there's someone there that feels guilty about the 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 children part. Yeah, man. Like, I don't know why. I've always felt guilty about not doing enough for my son. Oh, let me tell you this last thing. And I know, you know, I talk too much sometimes. No, you don't. Know, this is great. You got to get it off your chest. So I had my best friend, right, was right. a woman. She is no longer my best friend. And, you know, she hurt me bad. You know what she told me? She told me that maybe God did this to me because he needed me to understand that I used to do too much for my son. And my son... I was, I was, what's that word? I don't know. I'm not using the same words she used, but basically that I used to spoil him too much and that I did too much for my son, that this happened to me so God could get my attention. Like, who the heck would say something like that? Yeah, like, why would you go to the hospital where I'm laying in crying and hurting 
and you tell me those words about if that's the worst thing you can say wow. to me about my child is that I spoil them too much. I feel like I, I'm a pretty good damn father. Absolutely, spoiling spoiling is something that sits on the counter and rots. So it's not that. That's you know that Jana said that too from uh, yeah. she's from Canada. Nice to see you, Jana. Yeah. She feels we got New York in here too. We got New York. Yep. She, uh, someone else, uh, what was it? Marina, no. Um, Juan's from uh, Pennsylvania. I'm from Please. Pennsylvania. I used to drive trucks to New York every day. Yeah. That's I mean, when I was younger, I used to live in New York. I was in a foster home to, to the age of 12. So if you, yeah, I used to live in New York. Right. Yeah. Um, Look, she cried every day. This show, this show too will pass, Tanya. Yeah. Says. Thank you for that comment. Tanya. Marina, try, try to let all that past negativity go. Yeah, I'm trying, but you know, like everything else in life, you know, you know, this takes time. Yeah. Trust me, uh, and I'm getting there. I'm getting there, but I know I got a long road ahead of me to forgive people and to just. I mean, I one thing is I I don't feel. I don't feel angry with any of them. I don't. I really don't. Right. I can't feel guilty, yeah. man. Yeah. You know, I just yeah. wish they wouldn't have treated me this way. You know. Right. Yeah. Please. I I know that. That's just uh. Okay, Tanya. Virtual long distance hugs from. Thank you from Chicago to you, Juan. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Don't let reliving bad memories or negativity. You yeah. won't move forward. Yvonne yeah. from Athens, Greece. She's from where? She's from don't, Athens, Greece. Oh, don't keep me living bad memories. Yeah, 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 I know, I know, Yvonne. But this is all new, man. This is all yeah. new, you know. So I'm sure, you know, once I'm better and, and walking again, at least, you know, as much as I can, I'm sure I'm going to understand this better. And in time, I will understand this better, you know. Yeah. But right now, like it feels just like only yesterday. And yo, I will say this. Before I couldn't have, I couldn't tell that story of how I had the stroke because it was too scary. And yeah. honestly, when I was in um when I was still in therapy for you know in a hospital and then therapy for another month, I was scared to leave there yeah. because I was scared to be out in the real world without these machines attached to me. I, you know. Yeah, one hundred percent understand. Absolutely <laughs> crazy. Yeah, there, Marina. You know, I go, I go back and forth too, the, just because they're they're yeah. all getting involved with you, and I love this. You know, people don't want to be. If people want to be in your life, she says, uh, they will be there. If not, adios, 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 amigos. <laughs> That's a tough one, Marina. Is it for me to say, adios, amigos. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. this no lady. Oh. This lady, uh, salute. She said her husband is a is a caregiver, caregiver, so she understands. She didn't have a stroke. She, she didn't she have a stroke. stroke. Salute's a wonderful person. I've met Salute in person. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, nice to meet you. Yeah, she didn't have the stroke, but her husband had the stroke, and she's been the caregiver, so she does understand. She's yeah. Wow. You will, but you have to close the door. Well, after yeah. a while, you will get used to it. It gets better. It will. It does, Bo. Thank you. Yeah, it gets better. I mean, like I said, next month or during the, you know, I see celebrate all those little wins that you, you know, mm -hmm. like walking in your neuro fatigue. You said you get tired, which that's a normal thing. Um, yeah. But you get better and better and better. Next thing we know, you're going to be driving a truck out here to Texas. Yeah, I can't we wait. Can I can't wait. I don't want to go to New York. No more <laughs> New York. And I definitely don't want to go to Chipotle no more. I'm done yeah. with Chipotle. I, yeah. <laughs> That's funny. funny. <laughs> we laugh about it now. You yeah. Know, you're right. Chipotle. Yeah, no more Chipotle. <laughs> yeah. Matter of fact, I'm going to see if I get some money from them. No, I'm just playing. I'm just playing. No, yeah, but, no, I, you know, yeah. at the end, they finally did help me, you know. But, yeah, yeah it's crazy. Wow. What what else? What would you tell somebody? This is I, if some of you relate here. People, um, Juan, like three about uh, three months ago, he he had a stroke. So what would you tell people now that are going through uh, this? You know, just have okay. 
Every well, country is different, as you know. I got a message for for two types of people: those that never had a stroke and those that have had a stroke. For those that never had a stroke, go get checked. Go get checked. Go get your high blood pressure checked. If I would have known about high blood pressure and all that stuff, I could have prevented this. Sure. You know, like yeah. I didn't know about it. It's just I just didn't care to. I didn't know. Right. You know, so go get checked. You know, you know. And for those that had a stroke, I mean, one is just to get away from those negative people, man. You know, those people that because people are not gonna. A lot of people are not gonna understand you. Right. You know, a lot of people are not gonna understand this. I got people that don't understand me. You know. Like, I feel like I've lost a lot, but I feel like God is going to use me for something better now. And the other yeah. thing I would tell people that have been through this, let this change you for the better. Yeah. Let this, like me, I got to be a better person. I have to be. And I'm working. I'm, I still, you know, but I have to because one is I can't get angry and I can't let this happen to you. Like right now, my biggest thing is, you know, trying to control myself when I start yeah. to cry because. That could be bad for me, but when I start to think about my son and everything, I start to cry, and I gotta try to control that, you know, because I, because I could, this could happen again. So just control your emotions and just try to be a better, try let this make you a better person. Yeah, that's yeah. what I would say. Well, that's a beautiful ending there. Uh, thank you, Anna. She shared the, this program. Everyone that comes on her Facebook, awesome. Um, yeah, this is wow. Uh, yeah, I, I, you know, we'll go through these after, you know, these comments. Yeah, yeah. I appreciate it, you guys. Any, any last final words? Because if these comments will be speak, come, they'll still. Yeah, no, I just, I, still, I wanted to say I'm sorry to them that I didn't get to read all the message, you know, out loud and stuff. Like I said, you guys know it's not easy to read and stuff, and I didn't want to sit here and bore you guys just like just no. reading them and saying nothing, you know. Not so, but all. I appreciate you for give me an opportunity to come in the show, you know? Like, oh. I had some of my friends watch, and I'm sure some are going to watch later. And like I said, if some are watching that I said something about, this is just how I felt, you know? Sometimes people do things bad to people, but they don't realize it, or they don't understand it, you know? Absolutely. So, um, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, definitely makes you a better, this makes you a better person. Yeah. Yeah, mm. it does. I mean, you've got a whole life to live and you are going to, you know, prosper. You're going to just, I mean, I can't wait. I'm so excited. I'm really happy in seeing how you, how far you came or coming in three months already. Man. Yo, really you know what's crazy? Of- like, I never liked TikTok. Like, <laughs> if anything, I thought TikTok was the most annoying app in the, in the world. But ever since I saw your page on TikTok, it motivated me to open one. So now I have a page where I go in there and I, and I saw all my videos of, of my progression, you know? Yeah. So, you you know, when I saw yours, that's how I did it. So I like watching your YouTube, your TikTok. <laughs> me. I mean, I, I always thought of little kids and all that. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I can, I, can I really admit that I'm on TikTok? <laughs> I mean, what? Yeah, but yeah. I, the, the person said, tech, TikTok has a great stroke survival section. Yeah, it does. I go in there and I watch all these people and their videos of how they're walking now and stuff, and you know, it's cool. Yeah, it is great. It's awesome. Wow. The, this, yeah. Inspiring others is helpful. Yeah. Oh, this show has been so inspiring for me to hear your story, and hopefully, like I, it uh, lifted a weight off your shoulder, at least to get get it out. Oh, absolutely, know? absolutely. It, it it did feel good to be able to talk about it. And have people listening and you know and commenting and stuff. Yeah. You know, I was a little nervous. You know, I was a little nervous, but hey, I I know I still do. You know, uh, Jenny's asking, what's your TikTok name? That's a good question. Um, what's my? I'll tell you right now. (laughs) I don't even know. (laughs) It's right here. Hold on. It's so funny. It's actually, you know what. I'm your friend on there, but let me see. I know I saw that. It's um, it's try it's it's Trizzle seventy five. So it's T R I Z Z L E seventy five. So T R I Z Z L E seventy five. But yeah, I'm friends with you. You know, 
Cause I always watch your videos too, you know. Right. Yeah, you got a you got a great YouTube channel and a very inspirational um TikTok channel. Uh, yeah. I appreciate that so much. I mean, you're just yeah, such a, yeah, man. No, you've been yeah. helpful. Thank you, man. You know what else I like on YouTube? There's a lot of channels on YouTube that help you do your own therapy. Absolutely. And it helps. So those people that are struggling that don't have like therapy or a way to get therapy. Go yeah. to YouTube. There's a bunch of a bunch of yep. of channels, right? That help yeah. you. Yeah, and Absolutely. I and I use them. I use them because I'm not getting as much therapy as I would like right now, you know. Right. I definitely right. go on there, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you so much. No. Oh, you, okay, Jen, you're just fo okay. You're following on Juan right now. She, she just said that. Awesome. Yeah, cool. Yeah, I mean, I only got like four or five videos on there, but you know, Man. I'm just progressing my my progression. You know. Yeah, I know. I kind of really did just started mine. I I don't have a bunch, but anyway, <laughs> it's, it's fun though. But anyway. Yeah. Awesome. I appreciate it, Juan. Uh, you guys, thank you for being here and thank you for um, showing the love to, to Juan. So, see you guys. Take care. Yeah, thank you.